All right. Welcome to this test meeting. It's July 13 of 2022. We have a plenary next week. And to that end, we have a couple of topics to discuss um, in advance of plenary. These are proposals that are um, that are coming up that we would uh, that we need to review before we have a position for next week. Um, uh, the first of which is the behavior of wrapped module namespace exotic objects with Carity. And the second topic is taming the return override in private fields. Um, that is to say, an undone, undeniable weak map. Um, let's start with Shadow Realm. Carity, are you with us? Yes. Um, yes, I'm here. Um, Matthew, did you put this on the agenda? Well, who should we lead with? Okay, Carity, take it away. <laughs> okay, um, so so we discuss, or uh, uh, at least I discuss the wrap um, module name in space exotic object with Daniel. So we decide not to pursue that at the moment, and then instead um, just focus on what we promised, which was providing error, better error details around the the. Uh, import value and evaluate. Uh, for evaluate, we do that for parser errors. So if there is any error that um, occurred during parsing, we'll give you the full details of what that error looks like. Because parsing happens before we actually create a new context to evaluate the code in the, in the, in the realm itself. Um, if the error is a runtime error during evaluation, um, you will get the shadow error, if we call it like that, which is basically a type error saying there is a problem there, but you, you get no details at all. Um, the, um, the discussion in last plenary was, well, let's do at least that for the info value. So if there is any error during linkage, missing modules, stuff like that, 404, things like that, you will be able to get an error that is meaningful. Um, and if there is a runtime error, some sort of throw or something that happens during the initialization of one of the modules, you don't get that. So that's where we set on the last plenary. There were other discussions about should we pursue having a a more uh, more abstract operation that can kind of uh, do more with errors to, from, to transform or not transform, but to create an error the proper realm with the proper details of the error. And there's uh, a group of people who have been also vocal about the fact that if you are the incubator realm, you have all the rights to see the real error, not, not the real error, but to get the details of the error. Um, and I'm sympathetic with that position as well. Like if I'm, if I'm the incubator realm and I trigger the execution of something inside the realm and an error happens, I, I want to know about it. And, and I want to know in full details. Um, so uh, we have been back, back and forward in some of these. Um, Daniel is also suggesting that we do a, a no. So initially I was, I was proposing to do more like a hand waving spec where we say, hey, host, you can do these things, you can generate error, you can get the message, you can get the stack if you want, yada, yada. It's up to you to do all that. We don't care much about it. Uh, and then let the implementers to do what they wanted to do with that. Uh, Daniel is um, suggesting to be a little bit more specific about what copying the error means and uh, describing that in an abstract operation so you could copy the error from one realm to another uh, in, in some degree. Um, the copy of the error always have a, some, some weird behavior because you might throw something that is not an error or something that is not a built-in error uh, or an intrinsic error. So you get this different kind of object that you don't know what the shape is. And, Copying is not a thing, so you cannot really create an instance of the same thing on the other side, kind of a structure clone. You cannot do that. Um, so you have to, tr to trigger a different kind of error, which is a kind of a type error or something like that. Um, 
So that as like operation, we don't know what the shape of it will be or whether implemented will be fine with that. But um, if, if I'm of the opinion at the moment that if we're going to create that aspect operation, we probably should be able to use that aspect operation for um, to facilitate even more errors, not only the parsing error for evaluate and the parsing and, and linking error from uh, evaluate uh, input value, but maybe beyond that, we, we, we can provide more errors that, or more details on the errors that are happening during those two processes. Um, um, it seems doable at that point, because we know what, who, who the caller is. And then uh, there is one more vector to keep in mind, which is that the wrapping process that we have today does not have a specific direction, meaning we don't know if the caller of a wrap function is in fact the incubator ROM or the shadow ROM. Um, and, and that detail, if that detail was, if that detail was available, um, then we could do a lot more in terms of the ergonomics because we always know who has access to the details of the error and who does not. Because if you're calling a wrap function that is coming from the incubator realm, you don't want to leak any information there. But if you are the incubator realm and you're calling a function from inside the shadow realm, you should be able to access all the details of that error because you own that thing, kind of. Right. Uh, I think these problems are pretty solvable. Do you want to walk through this spec and about what the details of this is exact abstract operation and how I we didn't could... realize that you jump in. So I was I was trying to uh, uh, explain uh, some of the discussion that we have and some of the ideas that that, that we have discussed and some other ideas. So yeah. So yeah. We, sorry, we I missed the beginning. Here. Did you were you how did you feel about my proposal there about wrapping the errors generically? Were you saying that you were trying to figure out how to how to get the details right on that, or do you have some other idea? Uh, no, I, I went so I, I did explain uh, what we what we discussed in the plenary. I did this uh, explain um, the why we dropped the shadow the the wrap uh, wrap namespace uh, module namespace exotic object for now. And I explained um, the ideas that I proposed, which was more a hand waving mechanism to say that the host can do whatever they want, yada, yada, and, and why that might be problematic for implementers. I explained what is your proposal in terms of being able to have an abstract operation that can make the copy of the error, um, get the message out, out of it, maybe getting more details about the errors. I explained, um, where can we use this mechanism, this abstract operation in the import value and the evaluate, not only for parsing errors and linking error, but maybe beyond that, we can also use that for errors that are happening when you call evaluate or errors that are happening when you call input value because you're the incubator around, you have the rights to see the details of what's happening there. And then I jump into the fact that um, it would be nice to have the same mechanism if we're going to do this disaster operation, it would be nice to have this mechanism as a generic mechanism. So every time that the incubator realm calls into the realm, it can get more details about the error. That seems fine um, from the encapsulation point of view, but um, I'm explaining that there is not such, um, such thing to date as the, um, the details of who the caller is. Um, so the, the wrap function only has a, a, a round that uh, so, the, the wrap so function. To, I think that last part is totally solvable. To be really concrete, there are a couple of places in the current specification where unknown errors are replaced with type errors. And it's exactly those places where we're crossing a realm boundary and where we want to instead of replacing it with a type error, replace it with a new error that copies the message. Uh, and I can like point to the lines of spec. No, I'm are... talking, so I'm talking about, I'm talking about 
in the in independently evaluate and input value. Forget about those two for a second. When you have a, a reference to a function, it's a wrap function, and you're calling that function, and that function throws, are you going to get the details of the error? And um, from, from what we have been discussing in the past, the problems are uh, number one is that you might, you, 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 depending on who you are, if you're the incubator realm or you're the shadow realm, you should be able to to maybe get the details, but otherwise you should not be able to get the details. If you're the shadow realm, you should not see the errors, the details of the incubator, because that breaks the encapsulation model that we have. Um, but if you are the incubator realm, you should be able to observe that. But so basically this all happens right in the algorithm 2.1 call. Um, you want to share your screen or? Uh, uh, sure. I could, I could do that. Um, just a second. Wait, uh, share before, screen. Before we go on where we can, uh, plug this mechanism, can, can we go back to, uh, what mechanisms were, uh, yeah. abstractly where, what we would want to do? Um, cause I, I have questions there. Um, okay. so. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess from what I understand, what uh, is being proposed here is that some uh, information about the error would be propagated uh, through the callable boundary. Um, what we're saying is that we may want uh, some different information to be propagated depending on uh, who the uh, receiver or with the initial caller uh, into the boundary and so where you get the error back out uh, is. Uh, so in the first step, what um, let's assume we're in a shadow realm, uh, in a shadow realm, uh, an error going from a shadow realm to another shadow realm. From the discussion that I've seen, we're anticipating copying something like the message of the error. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's an abstract operation that when you feel that you need to copy the error, you call that abstract yeah. operation with the with the target shadow with the target realm, and then it creates a new error right. object that complies with the, the shadow realm intrinsics. And and the and the current thinking is any objects, aka non-primitive, to eagerly uh, read a message property on it. Uh, and and get the result and if the result is a primitive uh put it on a new as the message of a new uh type error object well so the current logic is if any exception is thrown a new type error will be thrown instead mm -hmm. regardless yes. of whether it's a primitive or function this logic exists in three places one of the places is ordinary wrapped function call, and one of the places is for evaluate and one for, for import value. All three of those locations, the logic would be changed to uh, take that error, check if it's a primitive or a function, if so, do the normal wrapping thing. If it's not either one of those, then, uh, then it's an object, get the message property. If that somehow leads to an exception, just throw a type error with nothing. Otherwise, if the message property is a string, then make a new type error that has that same message string. And if it's not a string or if anything goes wrong, then just throw a new type error without the, without the message. So a couple of comments there, Daniel. So the, the three places, two of them is clear that we can use that. In the other one, I'm not clear because this is the same mechanism, the same operation that is used when the shadow realm is calling the incubator realm function. Yeah, so anytime you cross the boundary in either direction, the same logic is applied. If you're passing something to yourself, if you're not crossing the boundary, then this shouldn't be applied. But if you pass a function back and forth, then sure, the wrap operations will be hit. Right, so the issue is that from the encapsulation point of view, we always um, we, we always strive for the, for the fact that the incubator realm Sorry, that the shadow realm should not be able to infer what's happening in the incubator realm. And if I think the, the level of encapsulation is equal in both directions. 
neither one is allowed to know about the other. So I thought the message property, because it's just a primitive string, would not be knowing too much. If you want to have some stronger, uh, you know, boundary, I don't, I'd, I'd want to understand what you're trying to get at. I don't know, Mark wasn't, uh, was, is around or not? Um, uh, uh, I, I understand the concern. My inclination is the same as Daniel's. Um, it's uh, in, in, um, in the hardened JavaScript uh, shim, we have this uh, whole little error subsystem to deal with uh, this tension around what, what, um, what do thrown errors contain? This is within a realm, so it's a different problem, but, but it's a source to some of my intuitions on this. Uh, this and this goes back to E. Um, one of the th things in general when you're trying to do defensive programming is you're often not paying as much attention to the error throwing uh, path through the code. So the uh, thrower and the catcher are often able to communicate through an intermediary um, in a way that when you're reviewing the intermediary, you're not thinking about it in great detail. So, um, so what we've paid attention to is that um, that the what information does and does not get redacted uh, along the error throwing path, and the the information that by default does not get redacted is the um, the simple message string, and that's and so the idea is that that our normal practice there anyway is uh, to include in the, the message string um, information that's useful to help a programmer diagnose a bug, that errors are the most frequent manifestation of some, of, you know, a sim symptom of some bug that some programmer should at some point be made aware of so they can go in and try to fix it. But at the same time, uh, to omit from the error string information that might convey something confidential that callers should not necessarily be allowed to know. So, so just the intu all those intuitions lead me to suspect that the simple string being carried through a realm boundary for errors um, is the right thing and that you shouldn't, be th you shouldn't be including information that you're trying to encapsulate. Uh, in those message strings, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so to be so to be clear, we're talking about we want to avoid all object leaks, but we're okay with information which could be encoded in strings passing over the the boundary. Like for comparison, the web platform does sometimes block these. If you include a script tag that targets a different origin, it's not executing in a different realm or anything. But if an error is thrown from that script tag and it triggers the global like window dot on error function, you're going to get a redacted error that won't even propagate the message because propagating the message would propagate something about, it could propagate something about the contents of that file, which could violate the same origin policy. So the web platform does already defend against information leaks, which we would not be defending against under this policy, but we would be, you know, comprehensively preventing object identity leaks okay. as is does that seem sufficient mark uh, our, so our I, was, I, was, I was not aware of this aspect of the uh, web of um, the web platform uh, and it is actually uh, uh, a bit worrying that they are that uh, yeah. what we're talking about here would be uh, would be leakier than yeah. the decisions yeah. the web platform made um, so, so let's let's just hypothetically say, let's say that this had not been had not yet been pinned down in the web platform, and we were be where you were actively discussing whether uh, error messages should be leaked across origins. Uh, with this, I, th I I think the I would make the same argument that the error message that the error message string uh, specifically, not just any string, but the error message string in particular. Um, uh, actually should be leaked across origin because 
it should already it sh you should already not be throwing uh, confidential information and error message strings and error message strings are so bloody useful for helping yeah. to diagnose a bug. So I think the historical context of the web platform is at first they did not do this censoring. They added it not really to isolate against things that are actually scripts, but you could have a syntax error. So you could you could use this to oh. bypass the same origin policy. So you could have a syntax error. You could set as your scripts target uh, the um, something that is not actually JavaScript, but just contains a secret. And then you could read a little bit of that secret through the syntax error. Um, I think, I think uh, some things in the web platform just inherently are these tighter uh, boundaries than what we're doing with realms. It's definitely good to examine it, but I think we're not going for that level of mistrust or distrust. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're going for a, quite a high level of distrust. I'm not sure that we're going for, I mean. I think I the mean, code I'm, that's I'm, executed I'm, in the shadow realm, it's like, it's not quite, I don't think we care as much about holding the contents of the code secret because they might contain a secret that the outer thing is not allowed to, to know about at all, in even the syntax of it. Outside of the, I mean, keep in mind that outside of the web, uh, I hope nobody ever reconstructs the same origin policy again. And these mechanisms will be going forward the mechanisms for isolation between mutually suspicious pieces of code. So, um, uh, so it's it's not like there's something stronger to fall back to uh, outside of the web. Um, and inside of the web, I would increasingly like to move to this anyway, because this wet, same origin policy is just such a broken thing. Now, um, uh, that doesn't necessarily reverse me on, on my recommendation here, but it just says um, that the, the rationale of we're not dealing with an isolation need as strong as the same origin policy is not, for me, a strong argument. Um, the, the the particular issue that that one particular thing that went by as you were talking about this with the syntax error is something I think I was overlooking that might change might, might change my mind on this, which is not all thrown errors are thrown by user code. Um, some thrown errors are thrown are you know generated by the platform, um, and the messages contained in those errors are not in the spec and the information revealed by the messages thrown by the platform are not in any way um, uh, constrained by the spec. So there is, there is this hazard that if we, if we allow these message strings to propagate across mutual suspicion boundaries on the one hand, and on the other hand, there's no nothing in the spec that implies that the that the platform generated messages don't contain arbitrary secrets. Like, you know, uh, this password was not was 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 not you know a message saying this um, uh, this this password was not as strong as it should be or something. I mean, it just there's. Um, uh, it, it's, you know, it seems a little bit far-fetched, but it's not. Uh, uh, th secrets have escaped by virtue of uh, uh, things being insufficiently specified in similar manners. Um, uh, so that's, that's a real hard constraint here. Um, we don't have any limits on what can be revealed in a platform thrown error message string. On the, on the other hand, the platform thrown okay. error message strings were literally the motivating use case for Shu to bring this up because they were getting these errors from import value. And it's because like something was wrong with the path or something like that. And so the platform thrown error message strings are directly useful right. yeah. for debugging. The, the, so the, one, the ones that uh, were letting through directly in the sense that um, uh, it's not a question of a 
inner throne error being mapped to an outer throne error. It's a question of just the operation itself um, uh, generates an you know generates an error which can immediately on generating the error be an outer throne error. Uh, those I'm fine with because then it's the you know it's the outer operation that failed to cause inner computation. Um, it's when something internally causes a platform thrown error that can contain arbitrary secret information. And then that platform thrown error then uh, automatically propagates through this boundary conveying the same secret. That's disturbing. One, one example actually for the modules could be like, you could imagine a uh, module space fire to import map mechanism or hooks or whatever being resolved to a full URL that contains a username and password in there. Uh, and now the platform throws an error uh, with that full uh, specifier. Uh, so I think, I think that this, the degree to which the, plat the, the secrets revealed by platform, er platform thrown error messages is just a wild card. I think does reverse me on my recommendation here. I think we need to not propagate these message strings. And it, it saddens me, but I think that's the right decision. So one thing to consider is that in both directions, uh, both in terms of making this more secret and less secret, a, uh, a user of Shadow Realms could, could wrap the API to either uh, prevent the passage of these secrets or propagate them. Um, I wonder if that changes our calculus somehow. I mean, of course, it's easier to just block them. Like you just wrap the I'm saying just, uh, I guess it's a little bit harder with modules, but you wrap you wrap all the code with something that that catches the errors and rethrows a generic type error with no message. Or on the other hand, you, you know, make something more complicated with message passing. If we produced a library that did this uh, like the opposite of whatever the default is. Do you think that would mitigate some of these issues? I think it would, and it and it harkens back to the the central design, um, you know, the central design point of the whole realms design, which is the realm API itself, as provided by the platform, is an incredibly unusable API. It's it's just it's 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 incredibly unergonomic. And it was designed with the, with the main criteria being that uh, we expect its dominant mode of use to be one where there's a, um, uh, you know, a half a membrane on each side leading to an overall uh, cross realm boundary membrane. And a membrane standing in that position is in the position to do exactly what you just said, which is, um, uh, and, and, you know, to, to do that with the errors as well as everything else is the membrane is in a is in complete control uh, uh, via its distortions about what to release and what to redact, and the and the membrane its starting point is the opposite is 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 the opposite of the realm starting point, which is its its starting point is to be fully transparent, and then you only introduce. Uh, non-transparencies by distortions. So I think it's clarifying to maintain the idea that the realm by itself is at one extreme of being completely non-transparent and uh, information hiding. And then the membranes start off at completely the other extreme, which is to try to try to emulate complete transparency. And then it's um, uh, and then it becomes a policy decision. Then you're in the ideal position to express anything other than those extremes by distortion expressing policy. Yeah, that definitely has uh, intuitive appeal, but given the, I mean, both the fact that you have this error subsystem uh, that, that kind of matches in the semantics that we're discussing and the fact that this difficulty in debugging has already come up in practice just in the course of testing the feature, uh, I still wonder if we should, if this is the practical trade-off that we should be making. 
I have a suggestion. Um, so it, it sounds like we would like to have error messages propagated uh, through by default. Uh, and we're concerned that some platform errors uh, might reveal uh, information that the user wouldn't be in control. Um, those would likely uh, be around uh, imports, right? Because everything else, as we, as we said earlier, is gonna be something that uh, is evaluated by, uh, by the code and where the code actually, the user code has a uh, possibility to, uh, to catch it. Um, so if the default was to copy the message, and then we had a recommendation that platform thrown error during imports, for example, shouldn't contain any uh, sensitive information. Uh, would that be enough? State the, state the recommendation again. Copy, so go back to copying the message of a, uh, an error object, uh, error object being TBD for now, uh, and having a recommendation around uh, errors happening during uh, imports and evaluate that any platform thrown errors uh, that so that wouldn't be catchable by uh, user code running in the realm uh, do not contain sensitive information. No, um, the, the, with this new concern, the, the, the fact that, that other platform thrown errors can contain sensitive information and that this mechanism would default to copying them um, you is 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 wrong. Is is um, you know the defo the, defo the 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 problem is that that it's not just the import errors; it's all the other platform thrown errors, all of which might reveal secrets. I, I, I understand, but the likelihood of that actually happening is fairly low, and the system that actually cares about those things is going to catch those errors and uh, and handle them. I'll go beyond yeah, so they, that. I, I'll, I'll be yeah. even beyond, beyond that, Mark. The, the issue is like, okay, so the platform throws on errors. Um, how is the shadow realm going to access a, a function or a, a functionality that throws our error? And the only case is that the platform provides in, um, new global value into the realm that they can call directly. So they're not going through the through the callable boundary anymore. So they're going to get those errors no matter what. It's not about the, the callable boundary anymore. The callable boundary is only when the incubator round decides to give you something. And that's where the error might occur, but it is already the... Uh, the, the, no, the I, I, I'm, I'm a, the... I think we're confused. There's the issue about when the when the when the the I hate the term incubator realm, but I'll go ahead and use it. Uh, when the incubator realm does an operation that directly causes an error without there being an a a need to create the error as an inner error when you can just create the error initially as an outer error because it was directly caused by an operation that the incubator realm uh, performed, then, then that's not, you know, then for those to have the platform error be visible, I think is fine. The cases I'm concerned about is when there's internal computation inside the realm that causes some error, causes some, let's say random type error, but that you're thrown by the system. Somebody, okay. Somebody uh, calls a, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, calls a, uh, does a method call to x dot foo, where x happens to be undefined, and the error, the type error that's thrown, uh, uh, reveals the property name foo. Uh, well, do we? Well, but uh, that, that, all, that that that's only the case if you're going through. The callable boundary, which is not the case, because you cannot go through the callable boundary for objects. You can only do for wrap functions. Um, if, if the same error happens just inside the realm, um, it never it never crosses the the shadow boundary, uh, uh, and therefore 
doesn't apply to this discussion. But it's only when you go across and you only can go across if someone handed over to you a callable object that we wrap. Okay, so your argument is that the user code inside the realm should only be providing callable functions that catch and redact? I, I think this is for the case where we definitely want to avoid leaking code across the contents of code that may have syntax errors across the boundary. I think this case is pretty uncommon. I think the, the web same origin model makes it important for it, but I'm not convinced that it's uh, universal. If we want it to be as strong as the same origin model, we would not allow synchronous access across realm boundaries. We are choosing a lighter weight, less restrictive mechanism than the web single same origin policy. No, the, 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 I, think, I think that's making a category error. It's, um, these are- the, the, okay. the, um, uh, There's the, so you can break down security issues along several dimensions. There's you know, the integrity, confidentiality, availability dimension, uh, and, um, and, and non-orthogonally non with that, there's the uh, access versus concurrency dimension. Uh, the, the fact that you're in the same sequential execution context uh, does mean that, well, first of all means that there's no defense at all with regard to availability. So availability is completely undefensible when you're just in one thread. Um, uh, integrity is weaker because you have vulnerability to reentrancy attacks, uh, but nevertheless, the basic object capability uh, integrity rules in the sequential realm can be and should be extremely strong. Um, and also uh, in the sequential realm where you can deny access to measure duration confidentiality can be extremely strong. And what we're talking about in particular in this case is a compromise of confidentiality in the sequential realm. So I don't think we should just give it away. Um, I, think, I think it's a serious matter. Okay, but I, I agree it's a serious matter, but because we have this kind of interdefinability of the two versions, uh, it doesn't seem like it's not a it's not a matter of fundamental capabilities. It's more a matter yeah, of the yeah. API shape preference. And for API no, shape preference, I think usability in practice is you know this this top level concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me let me make a further argument on on your side of things, um, which is that in general we we're you know, we are not expecting any of this to be usable until we build membranes on top of this stuff. And membranes on top of the stuff can implement, you know, using the membrane, you can implement whatever policy you want. You're in an ideal position to start there. Um, uh, and, uh, but in order to get there, you have to actually build the membranes. And if we had one universal membrane library that only needed to be built one, uh, we, we would know it, so we don't. We, we're still experimenting with membranes. So be, making the, the uh, problem of uh, debugging the construction of that first membrane, when, we, or, when membranes already are built out of proxies, which are already held to debug when you're first trying to construct them, um, is, is um, perhaps worth just this additional little bit of um, of not making debugging harder, just to, just to help get those membrane libraries going. Uh, yeah, uh, that's. I think that's a clearer way of of putting this than than I was making before. And, and it was, we have two. We have multiple audiences here. One is membrane authors, and the other one is is engine authors who are providing us this basis, and and you know conformance test authors, and these all. Are all this audience for this, you know, nicety that we're that we're discussing? I, I'd like to reiterate one thing. Uh, the uh, so I think that one thing I was implied here is that the membrane can uh, catch uh, the the exception uh, and, and redact it. Uh, 
uh, and, and I think that's sufficient for the membrane to, to do that. And that brings a second point is in the place where the membrane is not in a position to do that. And that's where I'm going back to uh, my uh, note in the spec saying that for cases where there is no user code running and there is a platform thrown error, uh, that error should not contain uh, uh, sensitive information. Uh, so if you do an import and then there is a resolution uh, and 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 uh, the platform directly throw an error, it shouldn't contain uh, information that wasn't available originally. Uh, Matthew, I, I'm very confused. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned before, like what is the import that goes across the membrane? I mean, across the, the shadow band. I mean, you're, you're inside a shadow realm and you do import, dynamic imports. Uh, actually, that's dynamic import is probably out of scope. Um, Whatever import you do, yeah. inside, the realm is inside the realm. It doesn't go across the the column of boundaries. So it doesn't apply. Yeah, I think the, yeah. the import value API is really just for the membrane system. It's not exposed to the membrane users or inside the membrane or anything. Yeah. I'm slightly concerned about like yeah, somewhere the membrane isn't able to catch the error. Yeah, I I I I don't um, I don't get. The point of I I, I I cannot comprehend how the shadow realm will ever call a thing that will directly that how how can the shadow realm invoke a function that throws an error that is a a, a generated by the user agent in this case the host and a is is going to leak information without yeah. the explicit um, provision of the incubator realm. I don't understand that. Yeah, I, I have a response that I yeah, think yeah. could carry this topic over for at least another hour, but I will refrain um, because we have ten minutes and we have another topic. Uh, well, well, Matthew, we do you think? We still have one thing about this one, which we haven't talked about, which is access to the message. Um, which I, I, I think think we have to triage at this point. What are we going to talk about for the next ten minutes? Let's let's finish uh, the error stuff, and we yeah. can uh, uh, sync up about Follow. the return of rights later. Okay, carry on. So, so if we assume that we can, that that I'm assuming that we can move forward. Or at least entertain the idea of the copy of the message and be able to create an error. Um, the, there are two more questions. One is, do we want to create a, a error that is similar in, in in type? And I think the answer to that is no. Well, I think Daniel was always saying that it's always a type error with the message. We don't know what the error was. If it was a uh, a more specific type of error, we will not propagate that information. I don't, I don't know about that. That's the second question. And the third question is, what happens if you have a, an instance of a, a thing that is not necessarily a built-in error, and are you going to be able to read the message out of it? Or the, the propagation will all, only happen with the internal slot for the message? Yeah. And even if you have a, a real error, like somebody can go and put in a, a getter as a message uh, on, on that error uh, object. Yeah, it's, I, I guess, should it be any object or should we brand check uh, the object for being an error object? I think we can start with that. Uh, I'm, in principle, like the question from, from implemented from Shu and Google in general, like for built-in errors. So those who have a built-in type and they will have an internal slot. Um, so I, I I think we should not do a regular get on the message. Instead, we just take it the, the, the message information from the internal slot and use that. If it doesn't have that, then we, we just do what we do today. So the current the current semantic, so first of all, I like the idea of a, of a brand check on errors. Errors will have an internal slot as the stack proposal moves forward. Uh, the problem is that the that the message, the is you know message already exists, and message is not an internal slot. Uh, message is a property. There there is no semantic state 
uh, for a message internal slot. And if there was, then you, it would be redundant semantic state that could, that could get out of sync. So it's not something I would want to introduce. There is a way out of that. Um, if you do a branch check for an error uh, and then you can uh, immediately do a, a get on property descriptor because you're sure that there is no proxy trap on that. Uh, and if it's a data property, you, should, you can just copy it only in that case. Yeah, I think that's the thing to do. I like that. And, and we've, we've talked about that same issue, you know, that same kind of safety with regard to uh, promise reentrancy. Yeah, so, so yes, I think, I think that's the way to specify it. So you're saying, Matthew, just for me, I don't know, Daniel is still around, but you're saying we do the branch check on the internal slot. If there is an internal slot, we know it is an error, we can uh, do a get on property to get the descriptor and check if the descriptor is a valid, is a data descriptor and get the data out of it and use that instead of the value of the internal slot. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, I don't, is there, I mean, is there a, a message, uh, is the message stored in the internal slots? No, that's, that's, the, that's the issue that I'm raising. Is yeah. there is no there there right now there's no internal slot and error which is a problem. No, there there is there is error but, data, but I don't know what that contains. I forgot. There I is think error, error data. Error data doesn't really have uh, anything attached to it. Well, what is for error things data that hosts? This is something ah. that that Jordan's often complaining about. He wants a way to check whether there's error data, but there's no real way to do it because there's no API really attached. Yeah, to it. that was going to be my next okay. thing. I, as far as I know, there is no okay. way to run check an error currently, and this would be okay. introducing. Okay. So the right. pattern matching so, so, proposal does the brand checking on error. I think that was a acute acute trick to to throw it in there, but yeah, um, the, and the, I don't and I don't oppose it. I like it, uh, but yeah. the for message. My proposal was that we just we're just doing an ordinary get, and there, we don't have to do anything special with internal slots. I don't really see what the problem with that would be. Uh, it, why do we arbitrary user code? I mean, it's it's arbitrary. Sure, but it's 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 all happening within the shadow realm. It's more complexity. It's just I, I I'm sure implementers would love less complexity, and I don't see a use case for allowing uh, any object with a message property to uh, to be copied that way. Uh, the use case, I mean, it's not about a use case. It's just an ordinary get is a very simple mechanism that doesn't, rather than introducing different kinds of mechanisms to say like, this is a real message, this is not just doing a get, you know, we're already, this is not crossing any sort of permission boundaries because it's just within the shadow realm. Yeah, my only concern there was, um, I'm, it's not a strong concern, it's, a, it's that um, you could observe that you, you, your error is being accessed across, or it's not, that, that uh, you, you're you being called across a, a, a the shadow boundary. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned of bugs in implementation because the implementation, that's going to that's exactly the time when, when it's switching from one realm to another. And now all of a sudden you uh, you go and call back into the realm uh, when they might already have uh, backed out of that, that realm. Uh, I, uh, I think we can add strong tests for this. That would be, sure, it's hard for but... me to imagine how that implementation error would happen. It's pretty, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I really can't picture how that error would occur. You know, um, it, it scares me a little bit to, Allow going back and forth into uh, there's there's no there's no back and forth. This is all happening before crossing the realm boundary. This is before, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's only it's only like what, I, the, when uh, we're crossing the realm boundary with a function, you have to construct a function. What if the implementation like randomly chooses the wrong realm to construct the function? What if they use a third realm? I mean, you can. You can come up with arbitrary implementation bugs. It doesn't make them likely or, or something that we should be guarding against. Well, the, the, the one that I was thinking about is very simple. I receive a callback. So I have a function that receives a callback and I want 
to um, sorry, I, I, I declare a function and uh, when my function is invoked, I can throw an error that has a getter for the message to know that this thing is being accessed across the boundary by, you know, like it, it might not be, might not be a big deal because you don't know if the caller of you is doing a try catch on you and accessing the message to do something with it or something like that. But um, if it is across the boundary, you always get that message uh, accessor um, call. Um, and I mean, this is very, very edge. It's super weird stuff. So I'm, I'm fine with just the get. With three minutes left uh, and seeing arguments in both directions that I find plausible, I'm I'm not willing to decide to to you know make a final decision about uh, get versus get on property, uh, but it's nice that that um, if we decide to avoid the the uh, running arbitrary user code at that point that we do have an option. Um, uh, wait, get on property will still call the proxy traps. It won't no, be a proxy uh, because no, no. you did on, a branch check. Yeah, only oh, after because you did a branch check. Okay. Right, exactly. Uh, once, once you know it's an error, you know it's not sure. a proxy. Sorry, uh, I, would, I would not find the, the get on property thing fatally bad. Um, if we don't have a conclusion here, I want to suggest that we delay the presentation to the subsequent TC39 meeting. So then we can just present a clean champion group conclusion. Because I think I don't want to create more doubts and uncertainty about kind of the finality of, of Shadow Realms, which is really like almost done. Okay. And I think we'll have all the strong opinions like within this room. I think we got we got this high level guidance from committee that we should expose something to be more usable. And we seem to be kind of in rough agreement on that. We're just working out details. Okay, if, if everyone's happy to let it, let it wait for another meeting, uh, I'm certainly happy to let it wait for another meeting. I'm kind of springing this on Carity. What do you think? Uh, so I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. We, so I, I plan to work on this today anyway. So do some draft and see how, how we feel about it. But uh, question number two is still pending for me. Is how we going to copy or try, attempt to copy the type or it's always going to be a type error? Oh, my, my opinion was always be a type error just because the types are just not very useful. And copying the type is complicated. Like you could throw something that's not one of the built-in types and uh, the real values in the message. What do other people think? Yeah, I, uh, I have, I have a, uh, another crazy idea is that now we have a cause in, uh, in, in uh, oh God. so you could just create something new that has like a copy of the message and a copy of the name oh. uh, and, uh, and set as a cause of a new uh, typer. Oh, oh that, that would be nice. What, what was that? I didn't. I didn't quite get so that. So you, yeah. you throw a type error, uh, and you have it. You have a cause. Yeah. Come cause a, a shadow realm error or whatever that has a copy of the name and a copy of the message. I like that. Oh, so you're saying not copying the message, just type error, uh, the same that we had today, but with the the cause being the details of the actual thing. I'm fine with that too. Yeah, so it's 11 o'clock. This is yet another, um, uh, you know, uh, big open design question that just came up. I think it's fair to, sh fair to say that if we're all happy at postponing it for one more meeting, we should do that. All right, thank you everyone. I'm gonna stop the recording. <laughs>